Hello and welcome to Lorefet Gaming Plays Bars Gate 3. I'm your host, Lorefet. In this Bars Gate 3 build video, we're doing the Pure Paladin Oath of Devotion Ultra DPS build. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Bars Gate 3 builds like this. Do not forget to hit notification bell so be updated more. So, you really want to do some damage like you're seeing before you. In other words, knock off Ansar's hit points by half almost. Well, this build is it for you. So I'm going to go over the advantages and disadvantages of this build. So here we uh, go. Now, uh, disadvantages, let's get that out of the way first. First of all, you're not going to have the third extra attack like a fighter. That's the only uh, disadvantage that is really uh, bad. Since you're doing radiant damage, on the other hand, certain bosses, yeah, you're not going to be able to have uh, enough damage on uh, Smite. Uh, another thing, I'll probably say one more for uh, disadvantages. you got to be real careful on your choices in the game because if you become an oath breaker smite and the other goodies are going bye bye now let's go ahead and talk about the advantages with this build you're going to have 20 not only strength but also 20 you guess a charisma yeah i have some ways to uh, go ahead and do that your smites are really powerful especially foes weak against radiant damage another thing i would definitely say in there is really good is you could be heavily armored so yeah you could be able to wield a two-handed sword doing some damage like that. Uh, another thing, one more advantage I'm going to say this is uh, really big in my eyes is your two-handed weapons. Yeah, you use that, you could do a lot of damage with this uh, build. So I'm going to go over everything from, of course, leveling up, potion, gear, tactics, even uh, some permanent stats you should definitely get. First thing I'm going to go ahead and uh, start at this time is, uh, I should say, character creation. Let's uh, go over the races. So I decided to pick a few races to go ahead and do this. You're asking also, can any of the origin characters also become a Oath of Devotion? Mythara can be, but she's more vengeance. But still, you could change her to Devotion if you uh, definitely want to. So I'm going to go over um, the first race, which is Tiefling. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pick is the Zariel Tiefling. Now, you get some very nice smites out of Zariel Tieflings, which is very powerful. And you get yourself a nice Intimidation level 0 spell. Very useful to use if you want to uh, intimidate or use perform checks. I should say definitely against certain uh, NPCs for your advantage. You're a paladin, you have high charisma. So yeah, take advantage of that. Tieflings have hellish resistance. That means they are very resistant to fire. They have dark vision, which is nice. And their uh, base racial speed move is uh, up there as uh, well. I'd probably say this is the best race to pick. Now, uh, next one's humans. It's another good one. You can select an additional skill for more proficiency. You get proficiency in spears, pikes, halberds, glaives, and uh, armor proficiency as uh, light armor and, of course, shields. And I'm going to go ahead and just show you uh, this uh, fifth for proficiency if you're a human. So uh, you can also pick another one. Like, for example, you could pick, uh, if you pick uh, athletics, intimidation, persuade, insight, and then your fifth one could be deception. Or anything else on that list as well. You can do Slay of Hands, History, any of the uh, good stuff. So in other words, you have advantage in skills, which is really nice. So let's uh, go over the next race, uh, Gith Yankee. This is a surprise one. I play Lizelle. She is really good. Gith Yankee is nice. First of all, you get yourself an Astral Knowledge, which will give you proficiencies in uh, all skills of a chosen ability. Pop that baby, you're all set. This is also nice, so in case something gets stuck, you could grab it and yank it down, which is uh, good as well. Uh, another thing, you get race movements nice. Uh, Martial uh, Prodigy, what's good about this is, since we're using a two-handed weapon, is great swords. Well, besides light and medium armor, you'll be wearing medium armor at the start, but that great sword is a nice advantage. Now, I picked the Gold Door for another race that is good, since you get a little bit more hit points every level. So, it's about 12 extra hit points, and it can come down to it. And dwarves are actually uh, pretty good for uh, this uh, Paladin build as well. Besides the uh, base racial speed's good. Dwarven combat training, I say a battle axe is really nice for this uh, build. If you want to go uh, that route. Dark vision, that's always uh, good. And uh, one more thing I want to point out is Dwarven resistance. Early on you can get poison. You can resist against that, so you can survive very well. Last but not least are half orcs. Their uh, racial uh, speed is the same as the tiefling, which is good. Then gain Dark Vision, which is nice. Relentless Endurance. If they get knocked down, they'll be back up. There's probably cooldown. Very good with that. If there's a tough battle. Now, this is the best part I'm going to talk about. When you land a critical hit with a melee weapon, you deal an extra dice of weapon damage. 
So you have high uh, dice on certain thing, you do extra damage. So half orcs like the brute squad. If you want to go for more damage, that's for half orc. I felt like Azariel Tiefling is good because of resistance. You get some smites along the way. Extra smites, which is really good. I'll explain about that when I do level up this uh, paladin. Let's get to the next uh, part. So uh, paladin, there are three oaths. Well, the fourth one is you break the oath. Your basic actions for Oath of Devotion is Holy Rebuke. You give your ally one through four damage. And or I should say uh, when they uh, use, uh, we use that for them. And there's your oaths there. I'll explain more about that in greater detail in the Oath of Devotion rules. So uh, this, uh, I say, Bill, you got to be careful on your choices. You can't be a dick. You be a dick, you can get, a, of course, uh, an oath breaker. Simple as that. Now, I found only two worthy backgrounds to uh, pick and choose. Number one, soldier. I felt like this is the best one because athletics is really worth it for a paladin to get to your foes. Intimidation is good. So you can intimidate them to uh, do things your way. Now, this one's nice. It's history's all right. But persuade, if I want to go for that, that's a great one to uh, get as noble. But I'd probably say soldier since you get more inspirational points. As for ability scores, your two abilities I'm going to talk right now. Your main ability you should put plus two into is uh, strength. That's your number one. Keep it that. And number two is your charisma. So let's uh, go over the ability points we're going to do. We're going to put that exactly at 17. And we'll stop at 18. And uh, there's also another thing you can get it up to 20. I'll explain about that more. There's uh, two things you actually do with that. Dexterity, I decide to keep at 10 for now. That's good enough right there. No harm, no foul. That's right in the middle ground. You're going to be using some bow and arrows, but not much uh, uh, compared to your great uh, weapons. As for constitution, I kept that at 13. I'm going to put that at the 14 as well and stop there eventually. Intelligence, that's my dump stat for this uh, character, unfortunately. And I'm going to be suffering in that department. Now, wisdom, uh, that's going to be good. So I'll get some middle ground checks here and there. There are some good story ones that only requires 10 wisdom. Last but not least, Lee, is your uh, charisma. I put that at 16. You're going to see that in a few moments. Uh, with that, I have a lot of talking skills, a lot of wee -wee, leeway, I should say. When I talk to people with this character, have them do things my way. Also, there's some paladin abilities that does require for that for charisma. I'm going to be pumping that to 18, but like I said before, there's another special uh, thing. I do get to 20. Last but not least are your skills. Well, besides your action, the lay on hands, you get to heal yourself. Or uh, so, which is nice. So first of all, I picked the soldier, which I got athletics and intimidation. Now the next one, pick persuasion. You're gonna be talking a lot and make sure uh, you turn on your charm, you con people, do things your way, and such. The other one, the last one is a toss up. I decided to do was insight. I could have done history, but I couldn't. Well, I felt like insight's better. This way, I detect more, detect more lies, detect more stuff, and things like that. You're going to start out slightly slow, but once you get your smites, I say level 2 or so, you do a lot more damage. Once you get yourself a nice, magical, great weapon, you're going to be flying up from here on out. And that's about it for character creation. I'm going to go over the Oath of Devotion rules, so let's do that at this time. So here's the deal. In Baldur's Gate 3, on the three oaths of being a paladin, you have a set of rules. Each of them are very different. Number one, do not break your word. So for example... You promise not to attack someone, and then you attack them next time. Yeah, that is a uh, path through the Oathbreaker. Do not be cruel. So in other words, do not torture anyone. If you decide to torture someone, you're an Oathbreaker. Do not kill the innocent. So if you decide to kill a Bay Knight who's a merchant, who's just there to uh, buy and sell stuff during combat, yeah, you could become an Oathbreaker. There's a special case on that. That's why I'm saying it there, so be careful on that. Do not cheat people. In other words, uh, yeah, don't be a cheat at all. Another one's be compassionate. If someone needs uh, a healing or something like that, or if they're, uh, you know, I mean, wounded, you heal them up, give them a potion, something like that. Help others. That's very important. That's right. You help them out. Now, one more I didn't put was is uh, in the game is uh, there's a certain point where you have to you could have someone assassinate the goblin in front of you. Don't let them do that. That's a path of being an Oathbreaker as well. So let's go ahead and level up our characters from 2 to 12. It is time that we'll go ahead and level up our Paladin. Please note this is a pure build. In other words, you're going through the Paladin process of 1 through 12. Even if you multi-class, you still have an Oath to maintain. So 
do be careful on that so we're gonna go ahead and start leveling up first thing we're gonna do is level two so we're at level two we get our class features we get our smites and we get our fighting styles and we also get some spells as well so let's pick our fighting styles pick great weapon fighting style now uh, this will happen as you roll one or two you get to do a very nice re-roll again which is uh good so if you uh, get a critical miss i should say or a near critical miss well guess what that's it and this is our uh, path for a weapon to use from this point on so any two-handed weapons you definitely go for and there's our smites there including reaction ones yeah set them if you want to now i'm going to go over uh, each of the spells of my personal selection thunderous smite this is a very nice one you can uh, push back foes and of course they have a chance to put them in prone in other words they'll be down for one round very useful also if there's tough enemies you can knock them off the cliff just remember you lose that loot next up is searing smite uh, this will do uh, I say fire damage like a normal smite instead of divine. It's very nice. Also, your foes will be on fire for 10 rounds if they don't uh, make the resistance. Another one I like to uh, do is divine favor. Your weapon uh, attacks deal additional 1 through 4 radiant damage. So if you need a little bit of, of help, pop that sucker and then go to town. Uh, another one I'm going to go ahead and pick is, uh, let's see here. Where's that? Okay, uh, this one's a good one. Wrathful smite. This frightens your foes. They have disadvantages on ability checks and attack rolls against you, and they cannot be moved. In other words, you want to freeze a foe that keeps on running around like a wizard or something like that, pop that baby. Uh, next one I like on, uh, is a Compelling Duel. Forces the enemy to attack you, gives you a, a nice advantage against them. This is like a taunt, so if you want to really taunt your foes, go ahead. I use it from time to time, but not much really, since I just go after them and kill them quickly. Honorable mentions bless. So if you're forced into a healing situation or a healer, you could use that as well. You can also use uh, cure light wounds as healing as uh, that too. So let's go on to you guessed it, level three. Now we're at level three. Besides getting our fighting style, and we get ourselves some more things, plus some nice Zariel Tiefling stuff as uh, well. Since we're uh, that, we get a little bit more sm uh, smites. Uh, first of all, let's see here. Uh, action, we get sacred weapons. So you turn your weapon into a nice sacred weapon. You do more damage with that. And emits a light as uh, well. You get turn undead just like the cleric, but the cleric one's a little bit more powerful. Very good to uh, have. It, it costs your uh, channel of charges. Now you'll be able to cast protection from evil and good. Very nice spell to have if you want to do that and uh, since we're of devotion we get sanctuary it's like a nice protection spell if we want to go that route we cast it on someone else uh, as for our race we get ourselves a uh, searing smite free so we get that free just like the one we get level two and it's a bonus action so uh next one i want to talk about is command command a foe to flee move closer freeze drop their weapon to the ground or uh i say drop themselves to the ground Good to have if we want to really mess with foes who run away, just like the uh, compelling duel one, except for it's not a taunt. So let's go to the next level, which is four. Now for any uh, peer levels you do is four, eight, and twelve. That's where you get your chance to get some feats, which we're going to get right now. Lay on hand charges. We get additional lay on hand charges, which is really good. As for prepare spells, I'm going to leave a uh, bless on here because I felt like that's a great idea to do so. Again, uh, if you don't have Shadow Heart in your party or a Cleric, this is a great uh, opportunity to use that. And I got Divine Favor as well uh, there, too. So uh, as for feats, uh, let me go ahead and explain about why I'm going to pick the uh, feat next. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick the Great Weapon Master. Reason being is this, early on, we get some extra damage against foes, especially for our next level at 5, we get an extra attack. And if we get extra attack, this will be very useful in couple with that. So when we score a critical hit or kill a foe, we get ourselves a free attack from our bonus action. So as long as we don't use a bonus action, we get to, uh, of course, do another attack. Kind of like Cleave, uh, in, I should say, in Neverwinter Nights. So you hit one foe, you do critical hit or kill them, and you move on to the next one, as long as you don't use your bonus action. And uh, bad news is on, the, on this is uh, your... Your attack rolls will be down, however, your damage output will be increased. So you get a little bit of disadvantage with the great weapon at 5, which is on the minus side, but our damage will be plus 10. And if you're like, a, I should say, half orc, <laughs> yeah, you can do a lot more uh, damage on that end as uh, well. Also, uh, that's about it. 
I should say for this uh, level up, let's go ahead and definitely get to level five, which I feel like this is an important level to talk about. So uh, next up, we're at level five. Here's the deal, everyone. This is the great, wonderful news. We get an extra attack. I just had to say it. Seriously, uh, we get ourselves uh, level one, two spell slots, level two spell access. That's important. We get an extra attack. Yeah, we get two attacks per, uh, per round, still one. We get ourselves uh, eight as well. This is nice. We get some more tools to use. We get ourselves lesser uh, restoration. Branding smite. I'll explain about that in a bit. And let's see what else we uh, do get, which I feel is important as uh, well to go over uh, that at least. Magic weapon. This is a uh, very nice. Gives us a nice plus one weapon for attack. Well, actually plus one bonus, which is good. And uh, protection from poison, which is all right. There's a lesser restoration. That's a more powerful one than the other ones. And we get silence as uh, well, which is a good crowd control spell if we want to go uh, down that path. Yeah. In other words, those annoying casters, we could shut them up. And as a Zariel Tiefling, we get ourselves a Branding Smite. In other words, they can't be invisible. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, change some things up. Get rid of the Shield of Faith. We're not going to need that. And I'm going to go ahead and at this point get rid of, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, let's give her a Bless. So we're going to go ahead and do Branding Smite. This means is uh, when we hit our foe with this Smite, any foes that are like likes to turn invisible like rogues, It'll prevent them from it because it'll be like a bright light. Great to have, and it's for 10 rounds. Uh, magic weapon I like is because uh, I said before the weapon uh, becomes a magical plus one weapon. So this is a great starting out, I should say, uh, ability until you actually get a, a plus one magical weapon. Uh, that's about it for this level. Now we're at level uh, six. This is the halfway point. Yeah, level 12 is the cap for Baldur's Gate 3, everyone. So let's talk about this. We get ourselves Aurora Protection. Uh, in other words, uh, our allies are going to get some saving throw bonuses. This will probably depend on Charisma. We have high Charisma. And let's see here. Let me get rid of that. They always want me to do that. I'm going to put back Bless, and that should uh, do it for this uh, level. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, get this done and go to 7. Welcome to the second half of Levels in Baldur's Gate 3. We get some few things. We get ourselves another spell slot, Aurora Devotion. So any allies near us, when we pop this baby, they cannot be charmed. Just like the other Aurora I didn't mention, you get knocked out or killed. That goes bye-bye. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, get rid of the Shield of Faith. I don't need that. I'm going to put aid there. Well, that's a good one. So this way we get plus five, I should say, hit points if we want to do that for someone. It's just a thing we need to fill, of course, the uh, gaps. Let's get to the next level. As I mentioned before, 4, 8, and 12 are your feats. If you're going a pure path, we get ourselves a new feat. You heard me right. Another feat, folks. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, put, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll just keep that there. Keep the shield faith there, plus two armor class. I, I really don't use that at this point. It's just to fill the gaps. If I want to, I'll switch it out for, like, for example, cure light wounds. Now, at this point, I'm putting ability score. I'm going to put strength at 18 and stop there. Uh, main reason being is uh, this, everyone. So uh, here's the uh, deal. There's a certain thing you can do in the game, in Act 2, to actually get strength up to uh, 20. In other words, you get two more strength points. I'm going to take advantage of that. And as for Constitution, I'm going to put that to 14. So our uh, strength checks are now going to be plus 4, which is good. And as for Constitution, I believe it's plus uh, 2, which is a great thing as well. So we'll get our main stat up there, which is uh, wonderful. There's also items that will uh, boost as well in potions, too. As for constitution, like for I need more hit points. We get a nice modifier plus two. And we get to resist some uh, things that does require constitution rolls, which is uh, great for this uh, build in case we're going in the thick of things with our two-handed weapons. And that's about it for this uh, level. Now we're at level 9. After this level, it's just three more levels, and that's it for this uh, game leveling up. Now we get level 3 spells. First, we get our level 3 spell slot unlocked. We get uh, things like War and Vitality, which is not bad. Uh, blinding Smite, we could blind someone finally. Yeah, War and Vitality is all right. It stores Vitality. It's a good uh, helper out, I should say, on that. Yeah, this is a Smite that blinds. We'll get into more of that later on. 
Another thing, Crusader Mantle, this one's all right. It's like the other uh, version that gives one person one through four radiant damage. This one's just like everybody gets that. Another thing I like is Daylight. You pop this in, in the field, especially near vampires. Yeah, they can't go into mist form. Yeah, they get blinded. Uh, elemental weapon that is not bad at all. You should pick the elemental you want to change your weapon to. Good for situational things. Uh, remove curse, very important to have. We have that for oath spells, which is OP. And we get revivify. So we get to revive someone. When we do that, they get one hit point. We get a beacon of hope. You and your allies regain maximum hit points possible when healed. They always get healed maximum amount. Instead of one through eight, it'll be eight as always. And we get remove curse. Very useful in the story for some parts. So let me get rid of that. Uh, reason why I'm picking uh, Blinding Smite is uh, if we're facing against a tough melee foe, we hit that on them. If they get hit with uh, that, they get blinded. And we're less likely to hit them, or I should say our wizard Gale. So in other words, it's a great smite to use and abuse. So we're uh, done with that. Let's get to our... Uh, Next level, which is 10. After level 10, we got two more levels. So let's go on with that. We get our extra uh, charge of, I should say, lay on hands. And we get ourselves another action, another aurora, or our courage. We cannot be frightened as long as uh, our ally is near us. Again, we get knocked out. Guess what? That goes bye-bye. I should say my main character, for instance, gets knocked out. That goes bye-bye. Uh, another one I'm going to get, get rid of this one. I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, elemental weapon this is like a situational thing we could switch to another elemental when we use that so if we want to switch for example cold or electric we'll uh, do that or switch to fire and you know we already have smi uh, fire smites like crazy especially for our Zariel tiefling so let's get to level 11 now for level 11 this is a very short level you heard me right so let's talk about that. We get improved Divine Smite. So we get to do extra 1 through 8 radiant damage once we use Divine Smite. So it's an improvement and another level 3 spell slot. So let me uh, go ahead and get rid of that one. And I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, let's see here. I might keep that one. That's a good one to use. Another one's good as Daylight as well. If we're face off against vampires. This is like a situational thing. More in Vitality. So we're in trouble. We pop that. And then Shadow Heart heals. That's a good thing. Now, uh, level 12, this is the last level of the game. So we're going to go ahead and get ourselves another feat. So uh, 4, 8, and 12, we do that, which is a wonderful thing. So let's uh, get the feat. I'm going to do ability improvement. I could do alert, but I felt like getting some more ability scores is better. I have charisma now at 18, so our talking skills will be much more better. I'm going to be raising that to 20. There's a certain thing you could do in the game to uh, do that. It's a permanent boost, as long as you know what you are doing. So that's the uh, thing. So we'll boost it there. Now, if there's a no, if we uh, somehow get a certain item and then do that certain thing, which leaves it, of course, um, I should say at this point at 18, and then we could also, uh, I should say at 20, I should say definitely, then we could use that certain thing to get more strength up there. But still, uh, I should say for now, get that to 18 with this build, and you're golden. And let's go ahead and get our pre uh, prepare spells. I think that looks all good anyways. At this point, it's just pick and choose any. We're done leveling up. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the next section is permanent stat boost. So uh, here's the uh, deal. There are three, yeah, you heard me right, three ways to permanently ability uh, score boost yourself. Now, Act 1, as a paladin, I recommend against doing this unless you try to become an Oathbreaker and then go for it. You spare Auntie Ethel in the first fight you face against her. What happens is... She'll give you a choice of ability score item you want. If you could go do this route or have someone else, of course, do that, pick uh, Charisma. Yeah, I'll explain about the, that reason uh, uh, once we get down there. Uh, for Act 2, you want a stair on your party. You got to have a stair on your party still at all times for uh, this part. You don't have a stair on, you're not going to be able to get the plus uh, 2 strength potion. So with the stair on, have him by Ajira in Moonrise Tower. She's the Alchemist Merchant. Once you do that, you know he doesn't like that, you get a plus two strength potion for you to drink. That's how I got my character, uh, I should say, the stat stat to 20. Last but not least is the mirror loss. Now, there, there are three ways to do this. There, If you get a certain check right to squeeze in a plus one charisma, you get that permanently. Now, if you have someone else, of course, get the plus one charisma from Auntie Ethel, you can find that with the others. There's your 20 charisma there. 
And if you do it right as well, you get yourself a plus two stat choice. You have to lose one first, which is curable, but you guessed it, you know, and remove curse. And then you pick the other one, like for example, like I did was plus uh, two charisma. Now, if you already got the octiethyl combination and the uh, mineral loss first time, what happens is, of course, is uh, that. So those are your three uh, permanent stat boosts. I'm going to go ahead and quickly show the potion, and then I'll uh, show the mineral loss one I uh, did with the just uh, plus two stat. Be careful about the mirror loss. You don't pass any of the checks. You don't get the uh, bonuses from that. And if you get the uh, nothing thing after a hand charisma check, you fail. You get nothing. So be careful on that. Make a save on uh, Act 3 mirror loss. So let's go over the uh, strength potion. I'll show you the result of that. After Asteron bites our favorite drow merchant in Moonrise Towers, guess what? She will uh, pony up the plus two strength potion, and if you, uh, of course, gave her blood, she'll pony that up as well, for depending on what race you uh, definitely pick. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, quickly show you the stat boost, and uh, there we uh, go. That's your stat boost. Just remember, make sure Asteron's with you in Act 2 during the moment, so this way you can bite her, and you get the plus two strength potion to use and abuse permanently. As for the Mirror of Loss... So here's the deal, for to get your strength up, that's number one, claim memories of strength. Another one is uh, Warm Guile, which is number six to Trauma Dragon, that's your plus two charisma. For this build, I'm going to say it's number six is there, unless you did the Auntie Ethel thing and you uh, cheese, of course, a plus one charisma, which you already got 20, then uh, pick one. But for now, and for this build, what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. And yeah, uh, you'll get that. Once you get that boost up there, uh, again, let me uh, go ahead and remind everyone with the mirror loss, as long as you remove curse, you're permanently fine. That will never go away. Just remember to pass those intelligent checks. And if you need to, save scum until you uh, get what you desire. That's all I'm going to say on uh, that, but still, let me uh, get out of this part and uh, show you, uh, the, of course, the charisma boost. You see the stolen valor debuff, that's temporary. And the other one, like I said before, your charisma definitely goes up there. Yeah, see, it's at 20 already unbuffed. So let's go ahead and talk about the next section. For this build, I'm going to go over the tadpole powers, I call it. I'm even going to go over the half mind flare tadpole powers. In other words, you, of course, put the astral tadpole in your eye and you gain the last set of uh, tadpole powers that's only exclusive to that. So here's a list that you should definitely go for. Here are the tadpole powers before you decide to consume the astral tadpole if you're going to go that route. Favorable beginnings boosts attack rolls or gives you advantage in dialogue. So this could be used in combat or better yet if you want to talk your way out of certain things once uh, against a person, pop this as well. Call the weak. This is a passive power. So when a creature has few hit points less than your tadpole powers, it dies. So, for example, you have five, and that creature only has two or three hit points. It dies instantly. That's right, it's gone. Psionic Backlash, when a foe casts a spell, you do 1d4 damage per caster level. Very powerful counter spell ability thing. You can do damage against foes when they're casting magic. It keeps them in line. Uh, last but not least, this Force Tunnel charges forward and draws no attacks of opportunity when you do this. This is a nice ability to uh, abuse in the battlefield to charge forward to get to where you need to uh, go. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Tadpole Powers if you decide to consume the Astral Tadpole. Next up, Tadpole Powers after the Astral Tadpole is consumed. In other words, you become a Half Mind Flayer. Black Hole, this is an OP AoE attack, slows enemies down, can annihilate enemies in one shot. I did this towards the end of the game with a certain person with this. That person was ranking up kills like crazy. Try to get this ASAP if you decide to go this route in the story. Fly. Gain the ability to fly. Very important to have. You want to move around the battlefield? This is it here. Repulsor. AOE pushback attack. If you're a caster, you have this tadpole power in you, the astral one. You want to push, I say, certain foes away. Use this. This will help. Free cast is the last one. Next ability, spells, or anything else like that is free a charge to use once per long rest. Extremely useful. So, for example, you want to cast a level 6 spell slot. Spell, for instance, Chain Lightning. Pop this baby, then cast Chain Lightning, and away you go. 
that's about it for uh, tadpole powers for the next part of this build video i'm gonna go ahead and talk about is gear of ice I'm going to go ahead and go over gear of ice. It'll be split into two categories. Number one, by the time you're at the end of act one, what you should have. And of course, last but not least, is before the point of no return act three on what you should definitely have. So first is the, by the time you get to end of act one, you should have the following. I'll list the alternatives too. Please note, you want to definitely get all these items before ending act one. In other words, don't go into the shadow curse lands until you get them all. First of all, Grim Skull's Helm. Attacker cannot land critical hits on you. Gain fire resistance. Gains use of Hunter's Mark. In other words, you put down someone, you do a lot of damage against them. Once per uh, long rest. So, long rest will recharge this. Grim drops this at the Amantite Forge in the Underdark in Act 1. Now, here's some other alts in case you don't want to get this. The Haste Helm. Gains momentum for three rounds. This is a uh, lock in a chest in a blind village in Act 1. Last but not least is the Helmet Smiting. When you use Smite, you gain hit points equal to your Charisma Modifier. So, for example, if your Charisma Modifier is 4, you get 4 extra hit points. Also, you do get plus 1 Constitution save throws. This is in a chest at the Saloon Knight Outpost in the Underdark in Act 1. So, let's get to a next set of items for Act 1. Now, chest pieces and Mantite Sprint Mail reduces all damage by 2. When foes hit you, they get a minus one attack for three rounds, cannot be hit by critical hits. And Manti Forge, you gotta create this in the Underdark in Act 1. You have to defeat Grimm in order to uh, do this, so yeah, you're in for a fight. If you don't want to do all of that, other alternatives is either Chainmail plus one you get at various vendors in the game, or full plate armor. They usually drop, just trust me, go to Mountain Pass, there's plenty of those there. Next up, gloves. Gloves of Dexterity. I felt like this was the best gloves for Act 1 for my Paladin build. Dexterity is set to 18 and you get a plus 1 attack. Get Yankee Crash. This vendor, I cannot pronounce her name. She sells it, so definitely have some gold before going into it. Also, buy before attacking. Another alternative I did place, in case you don't want to do that as well, is Gloves of Growling Underdog. Two or more foes. You gain advantage on melee attacks. If they surround you, this is uh, great. It's more like a tank glove, I feel like, than that, but it's a good off turn up. Uh, this will uh, give you also plus one strength save throws, door, rasgrins. Yeah, that's that big old hobgoblin uh, fool at the Shadow Sanctuary's treasure chest crates. Yeah, yeah, I guess Giz Key enters uh, treasure room, and his crates there will have the gloves there in Act 1. So let's get to the next set of items you need. Next up is the boots. Boots of Speed. This is what I felt like is absolute best. There's the disintegrating ones. I felt like those are more for rogues. So, but to me, I felt like Boots of Speed is the best way to go. When you use your mo movement uh, is uh, doubled for uh, one round. So, you get double movement speed so you can move around the battlefield and kick some butt. Thula, the Deep Gnome, has this. You got to talk her out of it or cure her and she'll give you the boots in Act 1 under dark. Alternate boots, in case you don't want to get those or do the work for it. Boots of uh, Genile Striding. The wearer's movement speed is unimpeded by difficulty terrain. So you step on anything like water or something like that slows you down. Nope, it doesn't happen. Blark sells this in Underdark Act 1, same at the Mitochondria Colin. That's the same place where uh, Thula is at injured. So good idea to buy that. Next up are the cloaks. Unfortunately um, uh, for the cloaks, there's uh, none. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the, uh, the necklaces instead. So let's talk about the necklaces. Amulet of Branding. Foes get hit with a branding spell. That means they take double damage and melee damage. Very good to use. Good idea to have your third melee uh, two-hander uh, use this throughout the game too. Get the Yankee Crash. Same one that sells you the Dex, uh, I say, uh, gloves. You can drop this as well. So buy the gloves, then kill her when it's time. Other alternatives, in case you don't want to do the work, is the Amulet of Restoration. Gain use to mass healing war word and also healing word, which is one through uh, four healing. Either uh, by, by one person or a whole party, depending on which one you use. Dry the Bone Cloak sells this at the Mitochondria Colony Under Dark and Act 1. Same places where Blurg is at and Thur is at. So you get a whole bunch of good stuff there. Uh, that's about it for Boots. Cloaks, unfortunately, not in Act 1. There's playing Act 2 and 3. And the necklaces. So let's uh, go ahead and get the next one. Next up to bat for Act 1 items, Crusher Band. 
Movement speed, it gets increased by three meters. Steal or loot from Crusher to get this in the goblin camp in Act 1. Now, if you decide to assault the goblins, good idea to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some stealing. A Steron will have to pull this off. Caustic Band, you deal plus two acid damage to foes. The early phone cloak sells this at the mitochondria colony under Dark Act 1. Definitely get some gold for that part. Now, here's some alternative rings. I picked two of them out of so many I definitely went through. Definitely over some save files. Ring of Absolute Force. Use of Thunder Wave Spell. It's like the Thunder Wave Spell. You cast it. It's more of a long rest type of deal. One through six damage. You push foes back. If you're Absolute Branded, you gain one extra damage. Sergeant Thrun in the Grimforge either drops this or sells this to you. Most likely drops it in Act 1. That's the Underdark, folks. The Spark Wall, or the Sparks Wall, cannot be electrocuted, electric resistance increase. Arcane Tower Basement, Underdark Act 1. You go to Arcane Tower, go into the basement, get this nice ring. So let's get the next item up, up on the list for Act 1. Now, next up to bat are the weapons. Sussor Greatsword. Plus one great sword science since targets on hit. Now uh, you need to uh, complete finish the finish the masterwork side quest. Yeah, that side quest by getting a Cessar bark. You get in the underdark, and you gotta look for a normal mundane great sword, plain one. Combine those two at the forge. That's uh, in the one of the houses at the Blythe Village. You do that. This sword is yours. I felt like this is the best sword for Act One because if you're going against casters, especially, pop this on them. They are silent. Now, other alternatives are uh, good ones, which is the Sword of Justice, plus one great sword. Tears Protection gives you this person with the buff, plus two armor class, ends when you remove the sword. Now, the drop off the uh, sword, if I remember correctly on my notes, does involve Karlak and her quest. And that is uh, absolutely drop, you uh, guessed it, by Anders in the Risen Road toll, toll House. So you'll have to make sure you force to fight him. Expose them and then the sword is yours. Now I'm going to put this as an honorable mention. Everburn Blade is good to have if you did get it by killing Commander Zok in the prologue. That's the uh, one Cabonian demon that you face off against, optional to kill him. If you kill him, the sword's yours. If you cannot do that, ignore it and then complete the act. You have the other two swords up there that's much better. So let's get to the last weapon. Last but not least are the Act 1 bows. No worries, you want to get one of these three bows by the end of Act 1. Titan String Bow plus one Long Bow. This Long Bow does damage equal to your Strength Mod. So if your Strength Mod is 4, you do a lot more damage with that. Bream in the uh, Zent Hideout sells this in Act 1 after helping out the Zents on their uh, quest. It's the uh, Shipment one. Next up, there's no alternatives. Giant Breaker plus one Heavy Crossbow. Foes get a minus one attack for two rounds when hit. Bream in the Zent's hideout also sells this in Act 1. Of course, you got to help out the Zent's by doing the missing shipment quest. Last but not least is the Bow of the Banshee. This one's going to be easier to get. Plus one short bow on hit possibly inflicts Frighten. If your target's Frightened, you uh, gain a bonus 1d4 damage against Frightened Target. Corsar Grey Moon in the Grim Forge in the Underdark sold, sells this or drops it in Act 1. You want to buy the bow, that's the best way to uh, go if you want to do anything non-violent. And that's about it for weapons in Act 1 and gear in Act 1 as well. So let's go ahead and talk about endgame you should definitely gear up for. Now, please note, I did mark some Act 2 items, so make sure you do get some Act 2 items that's listed before you leave. Very important, because this will be going towards your endgame gear. So first of all, your he helmet, the best one to get is the Helm of Balrogian. Heals 2 hit points per round, plus 1 armor class and saving throws. Cannot be stunned, cannot be hit, critical hit against. Defeat the Wormway Trials, then the boss after that in Act 3. Other alternatives is the Helldusk's Helm. Can see through normal and magical darkness. Cannot be blind at all, plus 2 save throws against spells. Where is also immune to critical hits? It's at the House of Hope in a lock room. You have to get by a saving throw. If not, you cannot get it. Finally, Saravox Horn Helm. Gain or increase vision meter, meters. Depends on if you have dark vision or not. Now, a uh, number of critical hits uh, roll drops by one, so that means you'll uh, have more likely to do critical hits. Cannot be frightened. Constitution save plus one. Saravok drops this at the Murder Tribunal in Act 3. So let's go to the next set of items. Next up are cloaks. Yes, there are actually cloaks from here on out. Flesh Melter Cloak. When wearer gets hit, the attacker takes one to four acid damage. 
it's in a gilded chest in the house of healing morgue in act two so make sure you get that in act two before leaving cinder moth cloak attacker takes burning damage which is one to four five damage per round ellis uh, cyrus's in the lower city sewers in act three drops this as uh, well Let's talk about chest pieces. Helldusk armor can use heavy armor when you wear this. Even if you're not proficient in heavy armor, you can put this on. When a caster spell hits you and you make a save throw, the caster who casts the magic spell against you takes burning damage. You're immune to burning, resistance, and fire you definitely do have. It takes three less damage from all sources. Raphael drops this in Act 3 at the House of Hope when you try to leave it. Now, all the alternative armor is the armor of persistence, damage reduced by two, gain resistance, and blade ward automatically. Damon sells this in Act 3 in the lower city. And another thing is next up is gloves. Gauntlets of Hill Giant Strength. Plus one saving throws. Also, your strength is set to 23, so if you're above 24, disc gloves are useless except for saving throws. Archives at the House of Hope in Act 3. Now, if you want to look for better, or if your strength's really at 24 in your mind, Legacy of the Masters, plus two attack and damage rolls with weapons, plus one save throws. Damon also sells this in Act 3 Lower City. Let's get to the next set of equipment. Next on our list are the boots. Helldust boots cannot be moved by, ma by magic or mundane reasons. Immune to difficult terrain. When you fail a saving throw, you can use your reaction to see instead. Teleports to area when you use this a special ability and does 2 to 16 Fire damage in the area. This is in Lord Gortash's room in Act 3 in a treasure chest. Lord Gortash has the key, of course. Alternatives for boots. Boots of Persistence. Gains freedom of movement and long stride. Two good actions you should have. Plus one dex saving throws. Damon also sells this in Act 3. You're going for the armor, might as well go for the boots. Next up are necklaces. Amulet of Greater Health. Constitution set to 23. Unless it's uh, 24 above, that's useless. Advantage on Constitution save throws. This is in the archives at the House of Hope in Act 3 along with the Gloves of the Hill Giant Strength. Other alternatives you want to uh, get. Surgeon Subjugation of Amulet. When scoring a critical hit on a humanoid, the wearer can paralyze the target for two rounds. This is once per long rest. Mouse Thorn drops this at the House of Healing in Act 2. So make sure you get this at the House of Healing before you do leave Act 2. So let's get to the next set of gear. Next up are the rings. Killer Sweetheart. This is the very best ring in the game in my mind. When you kill a creature, your next attack roll will be a critical hit. Uh, and the thing is, this is once per long rest, but it's very powerful. This is at the same self-trial in the Gauntlet Shard in Act 2. Do not leave the Gauntlet Shard until you get this said item. Next up, Ring of Regeneration. At the start of combat, you regen 1 through 4 hit points. Roland sells this in Act 3 at the Sorceries. Sundries, that's that nice magic shop in Act 3 at Baldur's Gate, Lower City. Alternative rings you want to get, in case you can't get either one of those. Ring of Free Action, you know the effects of difficult terrain, cannot be paralyzed or restrained. Aja, that's a strength uh, potion NPC I talked about earlier. Sells this in Act 2 at the Moonrise Towers, get it before you leave it. Risky Ring, gain advantage on attack rolls and disadvantage on save throws. Aja also sells this in Act 2 as well. Let's talk about the two-handed weapons. There were uh, quite a few good ones for, I should say, uh, throughout the game, so I limit it down to uh, two. First of all, Baronian's Giant Slayer. This is a great sword. On a hit, double your strength mod, so if your strength mod is five, it'll be ten. Add to uh, that. Advantage on creatures large and above. Plus three great swords. Enchant plus three. Giant form is when you do 1d6 extra damage, 27 hit points. And strength uh, throw advantage is up there. Drops by the boss of one way trials in Act 3. Same as the helmet. Not telling you who. Now, last but not least, the Sword of Chaos. On hit, you regain 1 through 6 hit points. This is a plus 2 great sword. Now, couple that with the Ring of Regen, and you're just like regaining hit points like crazy. Also, the Helm of Reunion as well. This is loot from Saravok and the Murder Tribunal in Act 3. Next up are the ranged weapons we're going to talk about. Last set of gear for Endgame. I did drop this down to two ranged weapons you should definitely get for this build. Dark Fire Short Bow, plus two short, short bow this is. Gains resistance to fire and ice, can cast haste. Damien sells this in Act 2. 
If you're really lucky, you didn't get an Act 2 like I did, you could get this in Act 3 as well if Damien makes it to the city. Now, another alternative, this is a long one. Fabricated Albervis, this is a plus 2 heavy crossbow. Illuminating shot, you fire a shimmering bolt that inflicts one of, of, of I should say, radiant orbs upon the target. That deals 1d4 piece of damage. Dazzling Ray unleashes a beam of brilliant light that blinds all creatures in his path. So make sure nobody is in the way of it. Until the spell ends, you can recast it over and over again. Cast it again may possibly burn you each time. Uh, this will t last 10 turns. So uh, here's the deal. On save, target still takes half the damage. Now, if they don't save, they uh, get the uh, 2d10 uh, on radiant damage. Very powerful. Lord Gortash actually drops this in Act 3. Worth a get. That's about it for Endgame Gear. Next part is build video. You guessed it. Potions and oils. Now, before the combat demonstrations, we're going to go over potions, elixirs, and finally oils. So, the first section will be the potions. As always, alchemy is your best friend in this game. Healing potions of all types are a must. Get them all. So, take advantage of crafting some potions big time when you find some alchemy ingredients. Potion of Haste gains extra action, plus two armor class, advantage on dexterity saving throws, and double speed movement. This is one of the abused potions in the game. I, I abuse it from time to time, so that's why I have an actual challenge. But if you're having problems with battle, drink one of these before you start. Potion of Flying, just like the fly spell, and set for one in-game hour for its duration. This will get, really get you around. Next up, Elixirs. Please note that elixirs last long until you do a long rest. So these are good potions to drink up. Elixirs of Vigilance gains a plus five bonus to initiative and you cannot be surprised. Great to have you keep on getting surprised. Elixir of the Colossus. This is an underdark potion. Really good as well. Increased size. You could jump around places where you normally cannot. Gain strength saves and advantages, which is good. And does 1d4 weapon damage. That's extra damage there. Last of all and least is Elixir of Viciousness. Increase your chance to land a critical hit. So if you have Saravox Helmet and anything else like that, drink this sucker up. Elixir of Cloud Giant Strength. Sets your strength to 25. This is great for melee characters like in this uh, build. Let's go ahead and talk about oils. So uh, next up is oils. You coat it on weapons and that's about it. Oil of Accuracy. Coat weapon... You uh, do bonus of a plus two in attack rolls. You need some attack rolls, use this. Wizard Bane Oil, it's hard to receive a minus three penalty to spell attack rolls and spell save uh, direct challenge, that's DC. And disadvantage on saving throws from maintaining concentration for two rounds. You see annoying spellcaster, use Wizard Bane's oil, then uh, pop in your weapon and go to town on it. Uh, last but not least, if you're desperate to uh, use poisons, it's all right to do so. Next up is a little bit of a combat demonstration with this build. In this combat demonstration, I'm showing early on why the, if you take the greater weapon feat at level 4, you really do some damage and uh, more. So for uh, this case, you definitely want to go against weaker foes. This way you'll call the weak real quick, and then you go for the strong type of foes last. In other words, you're taking care of uh, business in the front lines. And yeah, sometimes you uh, do miss. It happens from uh, time to time. See, we get a free shot. We're about to take down the second foe as uh, well in Act 1. So there you go. That's a demonstration real quick on, of course, weaker foes in Act 1. Let's go ahead and demonstrate a boss fight next. This build is also great for spreading terror against these bosses. As you saw at the very beginning of the video, I like to demonstrate one more of a fight, which does involve with a certain necromancer from Act 2. So we're just going to go ahead and abuse our, I should say, Divine Smite. Just remember, be careful on certain enemies that are, I should say, have a very strong resistance or nasty feedback to radiant damage. Already, uh, you know, that guy resisted the Wrathful Smite. That's all right. We're just going to go ahead and do another round of this. And uh, there, he's almost down to uh, 19 hit points. He's, he's from 91. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead on the person is set up to uh, kill him. Sometimes uh, you're not able to kill him, so make sure you have a good team member to uh, do that, like for example, Will. Will's gonna go ahead and one shot at that, and there we go. So here's some final advice before I do end this build video. So first of all, you're gonna start a little bit slow until you uh, get to level two, then you get your smites. After a while, once you get to level four, you get the great weapon mastery feat, 
things will really pick up. And then uh, throughout the game, once you get the proper items and set up, especially alchemy, you really do some damage. Just remember to be careful on certain foes that are basically immune to radiant damage or has that nasty feedback. If there's foes weak to radiant damage, like for example, Kazador, well, go ahead and abuse that as uh, well. Your frontline fire, do not be afraid to go up front. Abuse alchemy like crazy. Go for the best items you could definitely get with this build, especially if it's your main character. And if you want to, of course, uh, change to a path of devotion for um, Minthara, go ahead, do so, or any other characters. It's a good setup for uh, them. Just remember the races I use, and you'll uh, definitely get away with uh, the victory. This is it for my Baldur's Gate 3 Pure Paladin Oath of Devotion Ultra DPS build video. This is Lorfett signing off. Thanks for watching, and have a great day or night. Do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more classic and modern Dungeons and Dragons walkthroughs, builds, guides, and more just like this. If you like what you see, then uh, go ahead and pick my suggestion on the upper left-hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and relax in this nice chair.